There was a lot of time spent initially seeking out all the permissions, the planning permissions. Um, we had to get an abstraction license to enable us to take the water from the top of the weir, even though we're putting the water back in the river. And then there were all, all the issues to do with the, the fish. And so um, the design proposals were carefully appraised by the Environment Agency. Questions asked, reports obtained, just to give all the reassurance that we wouldn't be damaging um, the fishery. We did have to make planning applications for all of our projects so far. Solar PV projects on non-domestic buildings have to have planning permission, whereas on domestic buildings it's permitted development now. And so that means that you have to build in the time for preparing the planning application and for the time that the council takes to determine it. Um, and the, the sort of statutory time for that is eight weeks. Of course you have to go for planning permission and that's a relatively expensive process. It's not as expensive perhaps as a wind turbine but you've still got to do, it's usually classified as a sub-environmental impact assessment and um, it may typically cost 30 to 40,000 pounds to produce all the reports and produce all the plans. Well there is issues like noise, smell, visual impact, transport issues that it creates, groundwater contamination, um, flood risk, a whole list of things like that. This site here had a particular issue with a flood risk because it's relatively low down so we had to look at that in more detail. You might end up having to do an archaeological survey, you have to do bat surveys, in this case planning took about a year. Thereafter then you've got to get grid connection offers, that takes about four months from when you first ask for it. We had to look at visual impact, so that would be uh, putting a photo montage together to try and show what it might look like. Um, we had to do a desk-based survey on terms of would it impact on birds and things like that. Uh, we also had to use the manufacturer's uh, data on how noisy it was and show that you know over a certain distance that would be less than the background noise. Where we didn't have the skills within the group, we, we got people in to help us. So maybe with the technical side of assessing a second-hand wind turbine, uh, we employed somebody uh, to assess that for us and to help us. We employed people to assess the tower to see if it was structurally sound. So for specific instances, we got people in to help us. There's some big things like planning permission, grid connection, the transmission of your Vodafone mobile phone sort of thing and television and radio all have these links and you have to avoid them. So this, this network that exists, you have to sort of go in between and finding those holes can take quite a while sometimes. You have to get permission from the electricity company to be able to plug it in and also find out how much they're going to charge you to do that, which can be quite a lot of money. So up to £70,000. For any parish church in the Church of England, any major work has to be sanctioned and approved by the diocese in which they're situated. And our advice from our experience is to involve that committee, those specialists, that expertise, as early in the process as possible. Get them on side, get them to come and have a look, talk with them, learn from them if they've got any ways to tweak the plans at all, so that then they become friends in the process and not foes. The diocese are enormously helpful. The committee are the ones that advise you on to, as to whether you can apply for a faculty. The faculty is the planning permission and is given by the Chancellor. The diocese is a formal document, but you have to go through the DAC first and get them to say, you may apply, your, your application is adequate and likely to be passed. We had a delay with the planning permission because the immediate neighbours were concerned about the emissions coming from the exhaust of the boiler house. We had to get a report from the 
Environment Agency, we had used this report to try to allay the fears of the neighbours. So another thing we had to take into account that we're living in an area of outstanding natural beauty, so we had to be very careful with the design. We also had to check, uh, because this is a, a smokeless zone, whether the smoke coming from the boiler was uh, within the limits which was allowed. We uh, went to a firm of consultants to help with the design of the project and they put forward proposals where the boiler house would be sited and where the pipes would go and so on, what kind of boiler, and that was really invaluable. It was very important that we had this advice to begin with. From the time we did the feasibility study, it took about two years to, to do all the planning and the design for the system and for the boiler house. My name is Will Richardson. I'm a uh, project director at a not-for-profit organisation called Your Woods, and we specialise in uh, advising on forest management and setting up biomass supply chains. The key benefit that um, if they didn't have the sort of the knowledge of forest management and the processes involved, so for example um, uh, you need to know things about the legislation around cutting trees down, you need a felling license to fell trees and that, that, that is applied for through the Forestry Commission. That felling license is key to um, sustainability uh, basically you cut a tree down you've got to replant it on the basic level and the Forestry Commission give you permission to do that. 